Today we have some very important friends in the room from uh, British Telecom, uh, BT. Uh, the four of them distributed, four or five of them distributed without, throughout the room. But especially I wanted to introduce Steve Wright, who is the head of strategic research in the BT group, and he's the chief technology officer there. Steve has the last name as me, but we're not actually related, as we were going to say at the beginning of this meeting. <laughs> well, who knows? Though we did both go yes. to... <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> and we both went to Cambridge at the same... Not quite at the same time, but he was at Clare College and I was at Clare Hall College, so there's an interesting connection there. And for many years, he and Gary were uh, personal friends uh, with associations from HP. So our legacy goes back many, many years in, in, in various strange ways. And, and, and maybe we are related. If we would have to look. <laughs> uh, he has a degree in electrical engineering from Cambridge and a PhD from University College London. And as you probably realize, he's worked in international, uh, sorry, in information technology and communications for many, many decades now. And it's a great pleasure for him to have his colleagues and he uh, to give this distinguished talk. Steve, many thanks for coming. We'll give you a round of applause to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you. yes, yeah. Well, thank you for that very uh, generous uh, introduction. Thank you for reminding me of how long I've been working in information technology. <laughs> no, it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and let's see what I've got. I, I've accumulated wisdom to go with those years. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, I'd, I'd like to start off by sort of thanking Paul and Gary and Travis and the rest of you for the good time you've given us in the time that we've been here. I think that's probably speak for the rest of the, the BT group as well. It's been a really interesting, uh, well, we're in the middle of the second day, and, and, and it's been very valuable and interesting. And it's certainly pointed to lots of ways in which we can sort of take our, our partnership up to, 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 to a different level. And that's what I think some of the rest of the discussion has to be, has to be about. Um, so as, as, as part of kind of putting that uh, meeting of uh, kind of parallel tracks into a context, I thought what I could do is, what I best do really, is to just give a bit of background about about BT and its trajectory, and uh, BT Labs as and our trajectory, um, just to sort of give some context to the kind of things that we're interested in. Um, and, and I think that'll be, if you like, a, a good next stage in the dialogue between, between the, uh, the organizations. Um, because I think one of the first things to, you know, to bear in mind is that, um, hey, we're not a telco anymore, really, um, to a large degree. Um, and certainly in terms of what our trajectory is, uh, it's still an important part, obviously, of our, uh, of our underlying revenues and, uh, uh, and our assets, but in terms of the things we're trying to do and where we're trying to get to. And I want to just try and sort of map that out a little bit. Um, so, right, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about BT Business Transformation, um, a, bit, uh, a mention to our investment in our network infrastructure that we call the 21st Century uh, Network, um, and uh, a little bit about network services, about our move into ICT, and then some discussion about, if you like, beyond that, the next stage, and particularly about what we in, in BT Labs need to do and think about uh, in, 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 in trying to look at that future. And, and actually, in all of this, um, there's an enormous amount of uncertainty um, because uh, the industry is uncertain. Um, we're moving in, you know, kind of vigorously in some directions, uh, but people are moving vigorously around us and quite where we'll go and where we'll finish up is, you know, still not certain. Um, uh, trying to, to, to chart a, a path to be ahead of that is quite difficult. Um, and so uh, a lot of what we're interested in really is how we uh, interact with the rest of the world in a very open innovation way to try and reduce the risk of, of, of moving on there. So... Um, Uh, this is just saying, well, it's sort of the background to what I've just said, really. You know, there are lots of forces for uncertainty in the world's changing enormously around us. Um, and uh, convergence, uh, we live in a very regulated business, um, and so things can change at the, at the stroke of a pen in some respects. Uh, globalization, at the center of this, is actually a major factor in what's happening to us. It's a major factor in the world, um, and it's one that 
to some degree, it's a bit like boiling frogs, you know, that actually this thing is happening around us and changing the context. And we don't really think about it. We keep on acting in the same way till we suddenly realize that the world has changed enormously. Um, and to me, that's part of the background to, to our relationship as well. It's actually, if you think about that and you think about the UK and the US economy and where they are in the world and where they're going to be, then some of the things we do and we're very good at um, uh, are still going to be valuable. But there are going to be other things we're going to need to do and think about as well. And uh, we're struggling to work out you know, how we do those. And we'd really like to engage in, in, in a dialogue about how we might you know, de-risk that future. So one way to talk about where BT is going is just to take um, some of the things that our CEO has been saying to the city. Uh, because you know, it's only one perspective on, 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 where, uh, on where we're going, but um, you have to believe our CEO, don't you? Um, <laughs> um, and so the main, the main message, of course, is, is enormous change in lots of, lots of directions. Um, so um, moving from a telco to more of a service company, um, the world's broadband now, so you know, the old telephone uh, calls are a very small part of our uh, of, of our business. Um, we're investing in building uh, a very advanced network as the infrastructure to our, uh, uh, to our business. That's a very large investment. It's something like a $10 billion uh, pound investment. Um, and um, uh, uh, we have to make that work. Um, and then, of course, there's a regulatory framework around us um, in that uh, our uh, traditional business is very regulated. Um, we have just, uh, in a sense, half moved part of the infrastructure business out to be a, almost like a rail track. Oh, it doesn't help, does it, in this, uh, uh, in this context? No. <laughs> um, to be, to be a, a service to the rest of the industry, um, to be delivered to other ISPs, other providers, on an equal basis uh, to the way it's delivered to BT's retail business. Um, so, uh, and that's all... Uh, closely scrutinized by the regulator. Um, and to some degree, you might say the regulator's aim here is to make sure that, that BT loses some market share in its retail businesses. Um, and so that part of the business is, uh, is kind of challenging from that point of view. Um, and so what's it, uh, and, and, and um, uh, also making this, bus this, this new business work in a way that truly is equivalent is, 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 is challenging from a, a process point of view. So that's something that has a great deal of, deal of, deal of focus for us. Um, so we're moving from, from being a telco to being a provider of software-driven services, and that's part of the advanced network story. I'll say a bit more about that. Um, so we think of ourselves now as a global communication services company, and the service is quite important. Um, Customer service is very important to us. Um, we need to uh, work with other people to deliver the services that we're, uh, we're going to make money out of. So innovation, open innovation, has to be at the heart of how we operate, um, absolutely fundamentally. It, it, it's not just you know, kind of something you say. It is actually how we operate. Um, and uh, the uh, advanced network investment is right at the, the heart of all this as well. Um, this is what's going to enable us to, drivel, to, 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 to deliver software-driven services. So that's, that's, that's what our CEO says about the, uh, uh, the transformation uh, that is on many dimensions. Um, and, and, you know, kind of as a, um, on a personal note, when I, when I joined BT about four or five years ago, I joined because I could see that some interesting change was happening. It was going to be an interesting place to be. Um, and moving from the IT industry, I kind of thought that, you know, um, it would be changed, but it may not be as great as, and as fast as one might imagine happening in the IT bit, uh, uh, business. The convergence has truly happened, and it's happening much faster and much more pervasively, much more completely uh, uh, the, 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 than I imagined. It's going to carry on. It's going to be continuous change for us. Um, so, okay, that's the, that's the kind of descriptive part of it in terms of business, in terms of uh, then... We've, we're seeing enormous growth in what we call our new wave revenues, uh, which is the things that are not part of the regulated business. Uh, and if you see the, the kind of top lines on here um, in terms of, uh, you know, kind of five, six, seven, eight million uh, billion pound business with this kind of rate of growth, 
that's really quite, quite startling. Um, and if that were a standalone business, that would be you know, really something to be in. Um, but we still have our legacy business, and so the city still looks at us and says, you know, telco. Um, and, and it isn't. Um, so 20% compound growth here in, in networked IT services, which is a delivery of, of, of uh, uh, more than communication services, principally to, 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 to global uh, corporates. So it's actually taking over the running of their of the infrastructure, um, communications and IT and applications and maybe even sharing business risk with them. Um, broadband, of course, mobility. Um, high growth in all these areas. Uh, and particularly in the networked IT services business, then uh, these are large contracts that we win. Um, they require commitment for us to support companies. Here's just a selection from the, the last quarter of last year. Um, you know, every quarter there's another set, set like this. But, but they're, they're big companies. In each case, we have to uh, commit to support their systems uh, for a period of years. And so it's a long-term relationship. Um, it isn't like a consumer retail relationship where you sell on the phone and, you know, maybe they come back, maybe they don't. We really have to get close to these companies, understand what their needs are, and then make sure that we, uh, we support them. Uh, and this, is, th this part of behavior, which is very, very different to how we were, um, it, it is an increasing part of our, uh, uh, of our business. Um, our CEO says open innovation is what's important. Um, and uh, innovation, you've got to think about that very broadly. We're a service company. Uh, it's about innovating all the way down the service chain. It isn't just about a bit of technology, uh, a nugget, a golden nugget being tran uh, transferred into, a, uh, uh, into the business and turning into a new product. It's about innovation all the way down the line. Um, and a lot of that can be scientifically driven or it can be people driven or process driven. Um, but this is a very important um, uh, message really. So this is why topics like services science are actually very important that they're really putting the metrication and the, and the, uh, and the science into process improvement in these, uh, in these systems. Um, partnerships are very important to us. This is a slide that uh, the CEO showed at um, uh, a quarter of results to the city, and Berkeley are in there as one of the universities that we, that we work very closely with. Um, so that's what Ben says to the city. Berkeley are important. Um, Okay, so, 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 so that's the story about how, the, how, how our business is changing uh, and uh, uh, what that means for uh, uh, our systems and our customers. Um, now, un un underpinning this, this change is, is the investment we're making in our next generation network. Um, and uh, so where's Ben? There was some conversation in our last session about um, there he is, yes, about uh, uh, the bellheads and the netheads and the discussion about the next, next generation network way back in the, the kind of 80s. And, of course, the netheads won, really, um, and next generation networks are IP. Um, and so that's what we're doing. We're investing in an IP, an all IP network. Its main effect is to, is to simplify the current network we have, which is a whole almost spaghetti of lots of network, separate networks for separate services, um, uh, quite dense in terms of uh, the infrastructure, uh, lots of management challenges in managing uh, all of those different networks, and a very heavy cost burden. So uh, to simplify that and create one IP network and run all those services over that uh, is, is one important thing that we have to do uh, just to keep our cost base under, uh, under control. So uh, a major part of our, 21, uh, our 21st century network investment is, is exactly that. It's the simplified single IP network infrastructure. And bear in mind here that I'm talking about a, a global infrastructure as well. Uh, obviously, well, there are, there, are, there are a number of components, if you like, to the 21st century network. Um, there's the, the UK rollout of a simplified infrastructure, physical infrastructure. There's the, the global rollout of an IP MPLS network, um, and there's also the uh, control infrastructure and the 
system for creating services as well. Um, and they all mo uh, roll forward on different, different time scales. Uh, the rollout of the global uh, MPLS network is actually quite aggressive, um, whereas the rollout of the, of the physical UK network is much more measured um, as we try and make sure that, it, that it's smooth to all our consumers. Now, that's, if you like, the physical infrastructure. The really important part of, of the investment here um, is a different way of building services. Uh, so, uh, on top of that uh, IP network, and on top of other physical resources, then we create a, a, a set of common software building blocks that we can then use to create services in a much more expeditious and rapid way. So we can just put together building blocks and create new services as we see the need for them. Um, and even more importantly, um, we can create services. We can make the, uh, these blocks available to other people so they can create services, or even end users can create services. So again, this is you know, another tr a step down the open innovation route. But the ultimate aim here is to make it very straightforward for anybody to create uh, relatively complicated services. Um, and, you know, we use this ourselves. Uh, we're being quite forceful in the way we're thinking about new retail services. Um, BT Vision uh, is uh, a way of delivering uh, TV services uh, uh, over this, uh, this infrastructure, uh, tied in with um, uh, over-the-air services. Uh, wireless networks, uh, our Wi-Fi network, turning that into an open network uh, with a partnership with FON. Uh, BT Fusion as a converged uh, uh, telephony service, uh, monitoring and control, uh, ties in with some of the conversations we've just been ha having about uh, uh, energy control in housing and so on. That's obviously something we're very interested in. So here's, here's a set of the, the, the kind of new services that we can start to innovate on top of, uh, on top of this infrastructure. Um, and of course, wider than that, the opportunities are r really quite broad. Um, there are lots of um, opportunities for us to deliver services in the areas that are important to Citrus. These are important uh, areas that are important to our uh, government customers. Uh, we already work very closely with the, uh, with the health service on, 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 on their electronic records. Um, there, are, there are many more opportunities for adding value in this space. And of course, all of this convergence is really, as we all know, transforming the way lots of industries operate. Um, and so there are lots of opportunities here for, for us to work with our, our corporate customers and help, help them to make those transformations. Okay, so that's the 21st century network. Let me move on now and just talk a little bit more about some of the things we've been doing in that network services business um, in delivering uh, services to our large corporate customers. And probably one way to talk about this is to talk about um, particularly how we're working with HP, since they're just down the road, and that's kind of quite um, uh, uh, um, relevant uh, to the conversation here. Um, so uh, the whole purpose of this is to provide best in breed, if you like, to some of our corporate customers. So HP and BT can join together, um, and we can provide the networking services. HP can provide the uh, IT services, and together we can manage their entire uh, IT infrastructure. Um, and it's been a very successful um, uh, uh, venture. We started about um, 2004, um, and now we've got something like th greater than three billion, uh, I think that might even be pounds worth of orders. Um, uh, now, when you've got a situation like this where two companies are working together to deliver to a, um, a, a customer, then um, one of the important values to the customer, in a sense, is, a, is that there is just one leg to throttle. That's what, you, that's what it has to look like. Um, that's why there's you know, sort of the, 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 the benefit of being best in breed, but also being a single unified control point. So when things go wrong, you can get in there and kick somebody's ass and it gets put, put right. Um, and so governance is critical in this so that those things do happen properly. So it requires a you know, very uh, 
clear lines of accountability, uh, good management structure, and also um, a good IT or service delivery system underneath that uh, as well. And in the first case, first engagements, it's just really a question of bolting together two separate IT systems with a portal to the customer and making it happen. But the, but the intent here um, is to carry on growing this business and to make it uh, wider in the sense that we've got two uh, folks here, but we're best in breeding the pieces that we do. We may well need to bring in lots of other service providers as well into the ecosystem so we can meet everybody's full needs. Uh, we want to make it higher in the sense that we're moving up the value chain, maybe sharing business risk, not just being down there providing the, 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 uh, the service. Um, and deeper in that there's a deeper level of service integration with real straightforward information available to the customer so they can see what's going on, they have control over it, they can monitor processes, they can control things. Um, and so to do that, you need to build uh, a much more unified infrastructure. You've got to tie together the service delivery infrastructures of the two companies. Um, you need to tie into customers' data um, and also make sure that it's got open interfaces so you can bring in other folks into the alliance as well. Um, and this is all work in progress, but this is the, the next step of the kind of deeper, whatever those three dimensions were. Um, so, that, um, so that's what's happening uh, in that particular section of our networked IT business. Um, it, it depends on making alliances to, to really be able to deliver uh, the services that customers want. You know, as I say, they want one neck to throttle, but they want to know that neck's going to be around um, for, for, for a few years. So uh, uh, companies like HP and BT actually fit together quite well to, to, uh, to, 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 to do that. Um, okay, so that's where the businesses are going. So how does the research lab then kind of decide what to do? How does it operate in that, in that kind of context? Um, uh, the world's transforming. The world it, uh, that we're in is transforming. You know, we're transforming a lot. Uh, there's lots happening around us in terms of um, what happens on the internet, um, uh, the rate of transition uh, of web services, web 2.0, um, of uh, uh, um, the kind of things that are happening with um, uh, web services from Google and Amazon, all of which are things which start to move into this space that we're in. Um, and however fast we transform, how do we cope with the rate of transformation in, 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 in that's going on around us as well? Which, which of these directions of, uh, of a telco do we major on? What do we become going forward? Uh, it will be uncertain under any circumstances. We've just had a change of leadership. So Ben Verwain, who's led us for five years, has, uh, has, has just, uh, in the process of handing over to, to, to Ian Livingston, who was our BT retail uh, CEO. Um, so where will he take us? Uh, well, I'm sure he's got ideas, but we don't really yet know what they are, and yet we still need to work out how we take a path through, uh, through this. How do, how, how do we invent, uh, uh, invest? Well, I can talk in general terms about the kind of trajectory we're on, the kind of things we have to deal with, um, and that give us some, gives us some background to think about. Um, we've kind of moved from that, that kind of gothic um, legacy network into a more open platform, which in some senses is still a, a kind of a closed garden, but just a bit more modern. Um, we're, we're building alliances on top of that. Um, something that's becoming very important to us as a lab um, is actually how we interact with our, with our customers, uh, particularly the large corporates. Um, because if that's our business, then um, we want to get into long-term relationships with, with, with our customers. We want to understand what their problems are. We want to try and solve them for them. Um, and then the, these solutions turn into generic solutions across, uh, uh, across the market. So um, a large part of what we're starting to do now is, is to get into co-innovation and co-working uh, with, with our customers at the lab level um, in research relationships. And that's a, that's a new venture for us. We're, not very, we're just learning our way into it. We haven't yet worked out how to, uh, how to do it. We've got one or two examples of how it works well. Um, but that, that, that's got to be an important part of, 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 of how, we, how we evolve. Um, to me, another important 
part is the increasing openness of the ecosystems in which we operate. Uh, so here we're talking about alliances that are in, sense, in a sense of formal uh, contractually bound alliances. But this needs to be much more flexible, much more fluid. Um, we need to take, take advantage of the, uh, the services that are available as commodity services out there on the network and bind those into, uh, uh, into our offerings. So we have to learn how to cope with this. And I think that some of the work going on here uh, in, the, in the RAD Lab, for example, is, is starting to, 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 to grapple with some of the issues that would, uh, uh, that would arise then. So that, that, if you like, is a trajectory. Um, so the, the kind of dilemma we have at the moment as a, uh, as a research lab, so our innovators' di dilemma, is, is where do we play in this uh, solving our businesses' problems, um, being more vision-driven, and getting further out and looking at disruptions for the business. This is a perpetual you know, kind of dilemma that we have as a research lab as well. Um, it, it, it's always easier to work down here because the business gives you clear targets. It's much riskier to work down here, but there's much, much higher reward uh, if you can really kind of find the new trajectory or the new business for the, uh, uh, for the business. But then there's this new dimension of customer and how we operate with those. With the background of do we do stuff inside or outside? Do we work with people? Do we do stuff in universities? How do we work with universities across all these three dimensions? Um, and I think that we're, we're at a, a stage now as we're kind of looking and seeing our world is changing, that we're still, we're taking a moment to stand back and say, so what is the right way to play this game? And, and again, I think some, this could be a good point for dialogue uh, with, with, with folks here as well from their perspectives on this and looking at where things, uh, where, where things work. If you look at these different dimensions of this, uh, in terms of delivering to the business, this is how we're organized. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to say that it's really well tuned for delivering value into our business. Um, and we do that very well. Uh, but it's not so well tuned for doing either of the other things. So we work hard on developing our visions and here are you know, one or two that we've fleshed out at various levels of uh, depth over the past year. Um, but injecting those into our organization as it stands at the moment and making a difference, this is an internal issue for us really, but actually it's quite hard. All the, all the uh, gravity pulls you towards the business as it is at the moment. Um, and then in terms of working with customers, um, well, we're just learning our way into that. I have to bear in mind that our, many of our customers are global. Um, this is what we say to the world about our global innovation capabilities. Um, now, that, those global capabilities are research, they're research partnerships. So I guess this here represents Berkeley. Um, they're also about innovation scanning, about looking out into the world and seeing what innovation is going on. We don't do it all ourselves. We have to look to see where innovation is happening. Um, so we, we kind of cover the world, but if you look at where we're actually investing to do research, um, then obviously here in the UK, um, a lot of our more recent investments are actually driven by our, our customer interest rather than uh, technology interests. So we're, we're starting a new lab in China at the moment, but we're doing that not to plug into the innovation ecosystem quite so much, but because BT has a great deal of interest in getting into the Chinese market to the multinationals who are operating there. And so our, our lab there will be much more to relate to our customers in China and get close to them and understand uh, how they work. Um, similarly, our operations, the stuff we're doing in India, um, has a research component to it, but it's really also driven by our desire to get into uh, the, uh, the Indian market. And, you know, you can look at the US side and wonder what we should be doing there, really. Um, so on the on the same kind of <laughs> yeah yeah right right I mean these are these are some things we have to worry about we know we have to worry about them um, and I actually put this list down I've had this list I've been carrying it around for some time but what's been striking to me is being the conversations we've been having here and you can kind of tick each one of those off really in terms of um, the interest and, and the alignment there is between, between our two, uh, two organisations. I think it's been quite startling to me um, uh, how much alignment there is. But then I suppose it's just a measure of what's happening in the world and we both follow the same, the same uh, uh, signs. 
Um, so just to sort of wrap up, really, um, I sort of run through BT and the labs and, and, and where we are. Uh, and and this, is, you know, this is really our, our, our challenge. Um, we, we need to, um, we as a lab need to work out how we help the business across all of these spaces. Um, we're going to more and more be working with our customers. Um, how do we best utilize the real power there is in universities to do the same thing, to help us work across here and to help us work here, as well as doing the traditional technology <coughs> creation that, that we've both done so well together uh, uh, previously? And I think if you look, you know, stand back and look at what's happening with globalization, I think these are, you know, two important aspects that have to be, have to be dealt with. Uh, and that's really all that I wanted to say. Um, I, I think that it's really important to have the commitment from the top mm. for open innovation. Mm, mm. I like the fact that you have the word open in many of your slides. <laughs> uh, it's a challenge, though. Yeah. How, how has uh, BT been able to get the lower levels of the organization to, I mean, to embrace that? Because there's, there's, you have to deal with the not invented here syndrome that, uh, you know, if we didn't come up with the idea ourselves, then it's not a good idea. I mean, you, you're probably familiar with all yeah, the obstacles yeah, to doing that, particularly yeah, in a research organization. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So can, if you can talk a little bit about that. Well, well I, think, I think that one of the things that helps, that, that helps towards that culture is the fact that actually, you know, we don't make things. We pull together components from other companies that other companies have made for us to create the services that we need. So we've always known that what we needed to do is to influence the industry and, and influence suppliers to make things happen. Um, and so even historically, people's success, even out of the research labs, came from that. Um, you know, so you know that um, if you can not so much give away the idea, but take the idea and use it to influence somebody else, then that's great. And actually, one of the problems we've had is sometimes people have been too ready to give away the idea rather than, first of all, control it and then use that to influence the, uh, the world. I think another aspect, particularly in the research labs, is um, it's like shortage of resources and a wide space to cover. You, know? <laughs> you then realize you can't do it all yourself, and these things have to, have to happen. So how can you start to utilize other other resources to, to make things happen. Especially as you want to be flexible in these new platforms and growth opportunities. You yes, have to that's yes, right. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because, because often if you want to move into a new business or help Very a new quickly, customer you've, yeah. uh, you, uh, you've kind of just uh, engaged with, it may require expertise in an area you don't have. So you have to go outside then yeah, to get exactly. that expertise. Exactly. Yeah. Universities are one place to go to get that. Javid. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I have a question regarding uh, the phenomenal work that BT has done with your National Health Service. Could mm. you co comment on that and what kind of collaboration and where you look uh, to move forward with that collaboration? Yeah. Um, so, so the um, I'm I'm not very close to the details of the uh, of the work we do with the health service um, uh, because I don't want to get too close to it. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 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 essentially, it is about running their IT systems. Uh, it's about the, the communications part. It's about hosting the electronics record. Um, but, but then in parallel with that, we are also very interested in trying to work out how we can add value on top of that. Um, and also we've identified health and healthcare as being an area where there are great opportunities for us. Um, so if you like, separate to what we're doing with the NHS, which is about their IT systems, then, then health and healthcare uh, is, is, is an we, it's identified as an important area and we actually have um, a, uh, a business unit that, 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 that's focused on that. Was that, in, that was in one of your latest slides I saw at the top. There were five uh, business units, was that? Well, no, they were just, uh, they oh, were just general areas. Oh, I see, okay. Uh, okay. Though, though in, I can't remember what they, what they, what they all were, but there are, uh, there are some business organizations in at least three of those anyway. So we have... We have a global services transport uh, director who is looking for applications Excellent. in transport. Okay. Ravi, then, then Jean-Paul. Yeah. Uh, you know, I noticed uh, that from the, in the transformation from moving from a standard telco to a very services-oriented organization, um, 
there is this expansion of who you depend on to deliver your service. In other words, as the ecosystem expands and becomes more open, mm. you end up chaining together these services. Mm. And I'm wondering how that's changed the approach of the research program. Mm. Uh, mm. One thought that comes to mind is the propagation of quality. Mm. The more links in the chain, the more difficult the problem gets. And I'm wondering if that's opened up new research areas that you've approached and what some of those might well, be. Well, I mean, I mean, that's a research challenge, isn't it? You know, I mean, the, 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 uh, that is one of the fundamental challenges or the great challenges in, 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 in trying to do that. Um, particularly as you, you may have less and less control over some of the components in that, uh, uh, in that chain. So I think, it's a, I think it's a major challenge to work out, first of all, how you kind of um, best construct complicated services out of, out of components, what the fundamental building blocks ought to be, um, and then how you can guarantee the, the, the kind of business class of service that you, uh, that you deliver. Yeah. Jean-Paul. Do, do you know Jean-Paul from uh, IBM? Hi, my name is Jean-Paul from IBM. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the hint. <laughs> uh, I'd like to disagree with the first question you had in which the gentleman said that he likes the word open. Uh, I don't well, like it because... Well, well you're from IBM, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, IBM is perhaps the greatest defender of the word open, but I don't like it in the context of innovation because I believe that innovation is based on four pillars. There are four main properties of innovation and they are collaboration, interdisciplinarity, openness, and global. Yeah. And the only word you didn't use here, but it's all over your slides, is the word collaboration. Yeah. In fact, you have two question marks, one in each in two slides. If you replace those question marks by collaboration, which, by the way, is also illustrated here, yeah, I think you have the answer or partial answer to those questions. So uh, you have collaboration all over, but it's a word you never use, but you use co-innovation, but not collaboration. So I don't like open innovation because I think it's one of four properties, and you have illustrated the other two of the three very well. well Any I, comments I, on collaboration? Okay. So, 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 so to me, o open innovation mean, means collaboration. It means you're doing it with somebody else. Um, you know, it has to be. So, so yeah. <laughs> no, collaboration is not necessarily just for innovation. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think it's collaboration between people who are very interdisciplinary, which is the feature of Citrus, by the way. Yes. The yes. reason I like yes. Citrus is yes. because it's highly interdisciplinary, and you didn't use that word either, which right. is part of collaboration. Right. Okay, okay, okay. So, so I've got another couple of presentations in which I, you know, I would use both those words quite a lot. Uh, I absolutely agree with you with the interdisciplinary nature of, 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 of what's needed and what's, what's powerful about Citrus as well. I think we're arguing about, I think it's just the words we're using, isn't it, rather than... Back to... If I can make a comment, <laughs> because I, I actually struggle with the same issue. Um, and um, I, I see open innovation as a bridge to take you from a completely internally focused yeah. environment, so yeah. that not only is it, is it an R&D group that's internally focused doing work, but it opens itself up to the rest of the company yeah. to extract ideas, because I yeah. think any employee in any organization is a good source of ideas. I also see open, so, so that's the first thing of open innovation, in my opinion. It opens yourself up to the rest of the organization to achieve input and new ideas, and it also can act as a bridge to external collaboration, external networks, external mm. cooperative mm. Env mm. environments mm. that um, can therefore increase your ability to collaborate and mm. develop new new mm. products. So mm. it, it, it's a very good point because I'm, mm. I'm actually studying this topic myself uh -huh. and I'm trying to make that connection because most people are familiar with open source, yes. crowdsourcing, yes. and then you tell them what open innovation is yeah. and then they start to think, well, how does that, what is the context of that in all of these other terms that I'm much more familiar with? So, but if I had and one other quick question and that is, around intellectual property. Yes. I mean, obviously, as you begin to open up your, your software to other external parties, um, that raises potential IP concerns. Actually, IBM has been one of the leaders in, yes. in doing that with the Apache yes. Software Foundation. Yes. 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 Um, I heard a talk recently by David Yuan from IBM. I think he's from Albany, and he was saying that yes. um, they've actually dramatically reduced their investment in, in, in development by going into these open environments. Um, how have you done that? And, and has this required you to change your approach to intellectual property rights? So I think this is something that we're kind of grappling with at the moment. And I think we will have to, you know, uh, examine the way we think about intellectual property rights. Uh, certainly, 
so, so within, our, within our design organization, which are the people who you know, build the systems, then they, they are making more and more use of open source. Um, there's some, some, some very strong advocates of, uh, of open source in that, uh, uh, in that organization. Um, and we're not yet at the stage where we're mature enough in the use of it to, to, to really understand what the cost savings are. But I'm sure, you know, I, I believe they would be considerable. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I appreciate IBM's leadership in, 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 in the um, uh, IP around, uh, around open source. Um, I, think, I think that in, 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 in some of the uh, kind of collaborations with customers, then there are some IP issues there, which in general are probably a bit easier to handle because it isn't so much of a, uh, a problem. Um, but I think that, that in general, in our, in our um, uh, interactions with universities, then uh, we found, particularly with UK universities, that, 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 that actually IP can get in the way of, 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 of really worthwhile collaborations. Um, and I think that's something that needs you know, some help with from, uh, uh, from us and from, from the government as well, UK government. So that's a, less of an issue here. John Paul, did you have a comment on what he said about the... Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, good. good. That's good. Thank you very much. That's good. Uh, another closing question? or uh, Yes, Ben, thank you. So, um, when I was at Bearcore, the yeah. baby bells and the, yeah. the big AT&T bell were kind of starting to fight with each other, and then there's really no distinction between big bell and baby bell, and in fact, one of the baby bells bought AT&T. Yeah. Um, with the globalization, would you, I mean, it's already happening that AT&T, British Telecom, and all these companies will probably start to compete with each other in the global, global market. And in fact, uh, some of the compu computer service companies and um, telecom service companies and multimedia service companies also compete. How would you position yourself or BT in that context? And also, the, a lot of American companies are relying on India and China to develop software and hardware. Yes, 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 yes sure. Well, we, 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 we make a great, um, a great deal of use of, 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 of India for some of our software development as well, for managing our legacy systems, but also for helping us develop the, the new systems. How do, we, how, do we, how, do, how do I position ourselves? Um, uh, well, the, of course, we're all converging onto the same space. We're all, uh, industries that were previously separate are now finding that they're, they're fighting over the same customers. Um, and it's going to be a question of, of showing that you're best at it, isn't it, really? Um, and I think, I think uh, so, so I'm not going to make a sales pitch for, for BT in that respect. Um, what you're really asking is what, what, what are the qualities that we have of our approach that would differentiate us? Um, I, think, I think that aggressive investment in, in, in new network infrastructure and, and a, a service creation infrastructure will be, will be very powerful in that, in that regard. I think the alliances that we're making will be, will be quite powerful as well. You know, so, kind of so, the combi sorry, so the combination of a, a new, very advanced uh, platform, the, mm. the, the, the structure with the services on the top, that's the, the message yeah. that keeps coming through. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah sure. But then achieving that through alliances and uh, working with others through, through an openness. There's quite a range in the customers here, right? There's uh, yeah. uh, cities, you know, uh, automobile companies, credit companies. It's quite a, yes. it, you know, you, you're, you're very broad in your uh, customer attack. Yes. Is, yes. Is, that, is that true? I uh, think it's true. Yeah. It, it, it is, and, and, and that in a sense is, I mean, there's some history there in that when you're a communications provider, and what you're providing is, is relative vanilla, then you can deal with a whole range of industries and provide them with a, um, a, a good service. And, and, and so we're building on our existing brand with, uh, uh, to some degree. Okay. But it is a challenge, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? I think it was a fantastic talk. It was really nice, uh, nice Thank questions you. from the group. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming, and as I said before, we have a big idea.